Hey everyone, it's Mariah Russell. I wanted to talk to you today about the idea that we talk about in map training called the seat of meditation. And so the seat of the med meditation is the place where you go day in and day out to practice what it is that you have learned. So many years ago, I had this vision and it was that I had all of this stuff going on that was being stuck in my prefrontal cortex up here, which um, is where higher thought comes from. But what what's happening is that all of this thought, all of this knowledge and wisdom was being stuck in my head and it wasn't coming out my mouth, it wasn't going into my body, it wasn't being embodied, it was just being stuck there. And so essentially I was becoming the epitome of spiritual bypassing. And for those of you that are unfamiliar with the term spiritual bypassing, what it is is the concept of when we spiritually bypass, we learn all of these incredible spiritual ideas, but we don't actually integrate them into our work, into our words, into our life, into our actions. And so this has been something that I've noticed. Um, I live in a place where people do a lot of spiritual work particularly. Um, but there's a lot of people, they have that one epiphany, aha moment, and then everything is all very intellectual, it's all very heady, it's very ungrounded, it may be very attached, you know, crown chakra wise, but it's not full, all seven chakra grounded work. And so when we spiritually bypass, we think, we talk, but we don't actually act, we don't actually do. And the acting and the doing that is the depth of the prayer that we're looking to do, particularly in map training, um, but for everyone in all of our lives, I believe. And so the seat of the meditation is this place that we come to every day to practice the tools that we have learned, to practice our, to deepen our love, to practice our compassion, our kindness, our patience, all of these different things it's where we go to be persistent. And so for many people, their seat of meditation is going to be their job. Um, it maybe if you don't have a job, maybe you're a stay-at-home parent, then that's going to be caring for your children. Maybe it's going to be a specific hobby or volunteer position. But it's something that you spend a large quantity of time doing on a regular basis. And so when we go to the seat of meditation and we practice day in, day out, this gives us a chance to physically embody the lessons that we have been learning. And then it gives us this opportunity to reflect on what we've been learning and how we are actually integrating that into our actions, how it's coming down from being in the spirit or in our thoughts or even in our vision to or in our words, to being in our body and how we actually show up in the world. So how are we not just using whatever spiritual teachings or philosophical teachings that we have on an intellectual level, but how are we actually using these on a daily embodied level? And then the nice thing about the seat of meditation is that it doesn't change. And so if you go to a job every day or you practice, you know, you play in a band and you play with the same people every day, then the, a lot of things are consistent. You know, yes, your client's headspace is going to change. And yes, things with your coworkers are inherently going to change. But you're generally surrounded by the same people. You're generally surrounded by the same surroundings. And so if you are in this space where you're doing generally a similar thing every day, and I know lots of people have lives and jobs that are very, very different, but we make it as consistent of an external experience as possible, then it, it's easier to reflect on the internal experience and say, what is my internal experience being and how is that changing? How am I actually continuing to dive deeper into the seat of meditation? How am I practicing the lessons that I have learned on a more visceral level more frequently? And then I can actually see the results of the personal work that I'm doing. 
And I can also see if the personal work that I'm doing is not really happening. Maybe I, you know, I don't know, I'm working on compassion, for instance, and I'm always judging my coworkers or my clients or myself. But it's harder to see this if we're going through our lives without this idea of seated meditation because it's harder to see, am I doing this at the grocery store? Am I doing this at the farmer's market? Am I doing this when I interact with my kid's teacher? Whatever it is, whoever it is that you're interacting with. If you're interacting with so many different people, it's really hard to say, is this me or is this them? I mean, ultimately your experience is only you, right? But when you have different external experiences, your process is going to be different and the level of projection and transference, counter-transference issues are going to be different. And so if we focus on how do we show up and then how, do, how does the external world react to us, respond to us in this seat of meditation, we've controlled enough of the external variables to say, well, what is going on in my reality is mostly me. And so I can deal with it from that perspective. I can learn and grow from that place, right? And from that place, now I can assess. Am I doing well? Am I doing poorly? Am I going to my seated meditation and hating it? Am I going to my seated meditation and I think that I'm putting all this work into my clients and nobody's changing? Or am I finding that I thought that I was, you know, really working on patience and Apparently, I'm just being really trusted or tested on that or whatever it is. And so the seat of meditation really allows us to reflect back and say, what impact is my personal work having? Am I doing the work that I'm having? And then how is it reflecting on the rest of the world? And now this is the gift of getting really present and really focused in the seat of meditation because now we have the opportunity to ask ourselves, okay, so this is the reality that I have manifested. This is the reality that I've created. What can I do about it? If it's not the reality that I desired to create, if I'm frustrated and struggling, how can I step into this space and create action? Do something differently. And so this is now your personal feedback. So often people will tell me, oh, well, if I had only known I would do it differently. But now here's the real task. How do you take your own emotional responsibility to say, I'm gonna look at myself and my life and all of the things that impact and influence to really assess how am I doing? What can I do better? You know, where are things going well? Where aren't things going well? And how can I change it rather than needing my friend or my partner or my coworker to say, you know, you're really messing that up. If we can go to the seat of meditation and spend a lot of time self-reflecting on how are things going in this specific space, then we can do our own self-reflection. We don't need that other person to do the emotional workload of telling us that. And we aren't asking them to do the hard work of giving us that feedback because giving people feedback, especially if it's criticism, is really, really hard. And then once we've gotten to the point where we're really good at assessing ourselves and how we're doing in that space, in that seat of meditation, in that regularity, now we can do it within our entire lives. And if we look at a lot of people, I know a lot of people have, like myself, I do business and I travel the country, I travel the world while I do what I do. But when I start a new project, for me it's very important that my seat of meditation is actually physically grounded. And so I understand the new processes and the context and all of these things in the place because if I'm constantly doing a week of work in California, a week of work in Ohio, a month down in Peru, you know, and I'm doing all of this traveling, then even though I'm doing the same work, my surroundings are changing so much. It's really hard to track what where is that center? What am I doing? Having that personal feedback. And so I definitely encourage you, especially if you do have any of these virtual companies and you spend a lot of time traveling to, you know, start a new company, start a new business, start a new project and find a grounding space for a period of time till you get in the swing of things. Then once you have the swing of things, 
business just becomes business and it can be done anywhere. And now when you go anywhere, you're still reflecting on that business, it's the same thing. But if you try to start a business and you're traveling a lot, now you're reflecting on two different things of travel and what the business is, what the process is. So sit around and play with that. Um, how are you really creating patterns in your life that you can reflect on and where, how are you visiting and showing up in that seat of meditation? And then how are you using how you show up in that seat of meditation to personally reflect and then grow and change and do things better? And if they're not showing up, if life's not showing up the way you want it, how are you taking that time to actually reflect and change and grow? So thanks everyone for joining me this evening. Uh, please like, share, comment on my video. Love to hear what you think and have an absolutely wonderful day. Bye-bye.